Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be taking a look at a Zubuntu 1810 which is codenamed Cosmic Cuttlefish. It comes with the XFCE desktop version 4.12 which was released in February 2015. It is three years old at this point, with not a whole lot different from the previous release. We got a new theming, uh, some uplift on a few of the applications, the underlying components like the kernel would be uplifted. So that is it. Really not a whole lot of incentive to upgrade from the previous release. I think I could have wheeled out my previous review video, although before I said I could have wheeled out the previous review video and that still would be an accurate statement, <laughs> considering, as I said, not much has really changed. Is it a downside? No, not necessarily. If you want stability, then yes, it's a good way to go. But then again, you might as well stay with the previous release. Anyway, let's try and take a look at something and I'll, I'll try and make a video that lasts a few minutes and you get a bit of a look about the system. The elementary icon theme has been changed to use the Manila selection of folders. They've mentioned in the release notes about it being optimized with OptiPNG, meaning a smaller icon size and potentially improved load times. The Greybird theming has changed, including the Alt Tab application switcher. I have to say that does look quite nice though, the way it highlights the applications. There have been some improvements to theming in Chromium, which is odd that they don't pre-install it if they're going to boast about theme changes, but oh well. Oh well, not everyone likes to use Firefox, so it is a good alternative to have a nice theming in a different browser. The underlying kernel is version 4.18, which includes improved support for USB 3.2, USB Type-C, and better support for the latest Intel CPUs, as well as some power saving improvements. The memory usage at system boot up has crept up a bit from the previous version, where I've clocked in at 421. When I checked out my video of Zubuntu 18.04, it was about 360. So that is quite a sizable increase on the memory footprint. As I mentioned, there's been no change in the version of the desktop. So yeah, it's still the same as before. We have the whisker menu. We can either type to search for an application, or we can select from different categories. You actually have to select the categories with mouse click which is a bit different to the behavior in the Mate and the KDE Plasma desktops where you can just hover over to select different categories. You can resize the whisker menu. There's links to the control panel, lock screen and shutdown. There's a few different tweaks you can make to the XFCE desktop. Let's see how you can change the appearance. There's a few different themes there on the actual look of the application. So there's Numix, for example, Advaita Dark and the and back to the Greybird theme. There's an example here on the window manager tweaks, but I appreciate there are different changes you can make. So at least you could change the look and feel of it from the default. We could ignore these tweaks and leave things as they are. It's your choice entirely. There's nice transparency effects there and maybe a slight effect on performance there on the window move. I probably am putting a bit of pressure on the system with the recording. Behavior on the application moving, yeah, it's nice, snappy enough. Quarters, halves, throwing the applications to the top, maximizes them. Yeah, nothing wrong there at all. It's all very nice. The selection of applications moved towards some of the Mate equivalents. That happened in the previous release of Zubuntu 18.04. I couldn't really see much difference with the applications this time around. I was messing around installing a few different items. For example, GIMP and Inkscape. Just wanted to see how they looked. A bit of a different styling there on GIMP. I wasn't too disappointed with the look of a cute application. It doesn't quite match the equivalent GTK applications exactly, but the theming, the presentation there wasn't too bad. It's just a bit weird on the menus where they've got a drop shadow effect. Whereas you look at the menu in a GTK application and it doesn't have a drop shadow. I expect it could be tweaked to better integrate. Just a shame it's not done out of the box. I wanted to check the look of a snap based application. So I installed a simple screen recorder from a snap. Startup time there seemed to be about normal. Although one of the changes in Ubuntu 18.10 was meant to be that snap based applications would start slightly quicker. The theming here looks absolutely awful, but that's not an issue with the XFC desktop as such. That is a wider issue with snaps. Due to their confinements, they do not obey any of the desktop theming or do not access any of the desktop theming files. Applications can be installed with the GNOME Software Center or the Ubuntu Software Center. 
One of the changes this time around with Ubuntu 18.10 was a greater emphasis on the snap applications. So all the editor's picks applications are snaps. So taking a look here, for example, at Plex Media Server, if I scroll down and look at the source, the source is snap store. Doing a search for a particular application, for example, Inkscape, the first result is the snap store, and the second result is the deb package. Note there is quite a size difference between the two. The main reason for that is all the dependencies are included within the snaps. I'm using LibreOffice as a snap in KD Neon. One of the things that bugs me is the theming, but the functionality of it is otherwise perfect. The pushing of the snap applications is just a feature within the Ubuntu Software Center. KD Discover favors the dev packages above snaps. I just thought that was something worth mentioning. If you prefer to install applications yourself via Terminal or Snaptic, then you're not going to know any different. And that was a look at Zubuntu 18.10. I really don't see a lot over and above the Zubuntu 18.04 release. Sure, you get some newer applications and a newer kernel, but that is about it. You're not going to get anything new on the desktop, other than maybe some slight theming improvements, which perhaps will be more obvious in the likes of Chromium and the Alt-Tab application selector. But thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.